Hello, friends from Esta. My name is Ching. I'm making this video in Birmingham, UK. The conference theme this year is Bridges Between Research and Practice. To respond to the topic of the conference this year, I have decided to talk about Joseph Joachim. I will study Moser and Joachim's Valdin Schuller and Joachim's historical recordings. And I'm going to see how we can use those performing techniques when we play his viola works. The topic of my lecture is Joseph Joachim's uh, performing aesthetics in the 19th century. Joseph Joachim was regarded highly in Romantic German school. He is one of the top violin soloists in Europe during his time, especially in the circle of Mendelssohn, Schumann and Brahms. Joachim devoted himself to recall the love of the works of Bach. His close and strong relationship with Brahms certainly influenced Brahms' string music. Joachim's performing approaches are valuable when we are looking for a way to interpret romantic German string repertoires. In my lecture, I will analyze three performing practice issues. Starting from vibrato, Then, the second element is portamento, so sliding from one position to the others. And the last element I'm going to talk about is the tempo flexibility. There are four questions I want to discuss here. First of all, can we use vibrato in romantic music? Secondly, if we can use vibrato, will the vibrato be continuous? Third question, where can we use vibrato? And the last question is, what is the speed of the vibrato that Joachim used? The next element I want to talk about is portamento. Portamento is a slide from one note to another in singing and in string playing. Both the German and Franco-Belgian schools value the artistic use of portamento in string playing. But the way in which portamento should be executed is different from school to school. According to Karl Flesch, in his book, The Art of Violin Playing. Portamento is divided into three major categories. From the most basic one finger slide to the B portamento, which is favored by the German school, and the L portamento, which is more favored by the Franco-Belgian school. In my lecture, I will also discuss which type of portamento that Joachim used in his recordings and how we can use those portamento when we play German romantic music. The last element I would like to talk about is tempo flexibility and rhythmic adjustment. There is a sufficient literature and record evidence to address the issue of tempo fluctuation and rhythmic flexibility in the classical and romantic period of time. Joachim and Moser also stated in their violin Schuller, it's not sufficient to play the note correctly and suggested that a musical performer could free the tempo for expressive purposes. In my lecture, I divided my analysis into four different types. One, 
Acherando and Rolentando. Second, accent markings. Third, dotted rhythm. And the last one, rubado in ensemble. I will explain and examine those points with example from recorded and written evidence. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.